All right, Fox Body fans, I'm up here in Detroit, and you may or may not know the guy behind me. He's hanging out, and we're hanging out at his shop. He's got some pretty cool stuff, including this Mustang that's undercover. And once we pull the cover off, you're going to see this Mustang. I'll give you a hint. It's the first Mustang in the 11s, 10s, and 9s, naturally aspirated. And when I say Mustang, I mean fuel-injected 5-liter Mustang from the Fox Body, even before the Pro 5.0 days. So... I'm gonna spin around, we're gonna pull the cover off this thing. Some of you are gonna know right away what it is, and for those of you who don't, we're gonna walk you through the car and some of the parts that were actually on this car. So let's check this out. Hey guys, Brian Wolf. Uh, invited to have an up, come take a look at the shop and, uh, and take a look at the, old, uh, at the old red car that some of you may remember as he talked about. Um, real excited to have him up here, and uh, hopefully this will bring back some pleasant memories for everyone. Wow, this thing is mint condition. Holy cow. This car has basically a ton of history. Like we said, Brian, this was the first car. Now, a little bit of background on you. Engineer at Ford, drag racer. Correct. So what made you buy this thing in the first place? I uh, bought this car in 1986. That was the year I got my master's degree, so got myself a little present. And uh, I also thought it was kind of cool that it was the first year of the fuel-injected Mustangs. Uh, being an engineer and having the new technology fuel injection just seemed to go hand in hand. And then from there, um, it seemed like the right thing to do to kind of go racing. And the, the cool part about this car is we ran the GT40 heads uh, and intake in pretty much as cast form. And the first time we took this car out to the drag strip, and it was lightning, by the way, it had like the racing seats in it and uh, a nine inch Ford in it. But the first time out, we went like a, a 1259. And I have a 428 Cobra Jet Fairlane. That was the first car that I owned. And the fastest that car ever went was a 1289. I said, man, that was way too easy. And that was what really got me hooked on playing with the small blocks and playing with fuel injection. So from there, uh, we ended up running uh, 1160s with this car with the cast uh, iron GT40 heads and GT40 intake that's shown here. Um, it was the first one and we were featured in the 1990 edition of Super Ford Magazine. There were three cars. Uh, as luck would have at that time, I was the quickest, but my car was lightened. There was Storm and Norman Gray with his famous Mustang and also a guy named Grandpa T. Uh, in his Norman ran nitrous and Grandpa T uh, had a blower. That, and that I'm, I'm looking at this thing. It's this is a modified GT40, right? That the main intake tube from the throttle body looks like you got the bolt missing. Yeah, this was something that we did to open up the breathing in here because when we did have you know this uh, intake on this car, uh, we went in the tens with with the J30 uh, J304 head J302s I forget, but they were the aluminum head Ford Racing had in the early 90s. So to get it to run in the tens, um, and it was a th you know with the three you know with the with the eight two hundred deck height motor, uh, we had to open this up a little bit to uh, help with the breathing. So that yeah, that was modified, and we had to kind of use a little wrench to get those uh, fasteners on. Do you remember the quickest time you ran with the GT forty? I don't remember the quickest time. I know it was we ran in the tens uh, with that. Okay, so now next on the list, we got a very interesting looking intake manifold that will. Uh, Put the camera on here this looks complicated yeah this was really cool again you know the engineer geek uh and you, you this was what was called a, a 180 firing uh intake manifold uh chuck watson made this for me back in the day and uh this is basically um 180 degree firing from two different plenum so we had two throttle bodies uh the outer two from one uh fed one outer two from one bank and the inner tube from the other fed off the of one plenum and vice versa on the other side. Uh, this was also run with the J heads, the inline valve heads. I'm pretty sure we were able to clock off an, a nine second, I think with this configuration. Uh, and uh, again, that was with the J heads on it. So, you know, pretty uh, inline valve. And, you know, back then with an A2 deck height, that was, that was all in the mail for sure. So what, what was the benefit of the 180? This was more for signal, uh, as a lot of folks, you know, will recall, um, with a manifold, you get tuning. It's a wave that's going between the intake valve and the plenum. And when you get that even 180 degree firing, you get a stronger wave. Stronger wave means more air going into the cylinder and more horsepower. That's awesome. Now, did it change the RPM band too? 
Uh, this one, yes, but that was, and that's tied a lot to the runner length and cross-sectional area. Wow, that is all hand-built. Look at those runners. But still an 8-2 deck height style block and heads, right? Absolutely. This is an inline valve head deal? Inline valve head deal. Okay, so then when that didn't uh, cut the mustard anymore, you switched to the, I remember this, I remember this engine. This is the configuration that probably the most amount of people remember about this car with the, the big orange duct work under the hood and that giant Watson intake. And then at this point, you would also switch to the Yates style cylinder heads, correct? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, this was, you know, the Yates style C3 heads. Um, I believe it was only a two 100 intake valve. I got to check myself on that. Uh, and again, we had the two Ram air ducts that Chuck also made uh, when he made this intake for it. Uh, this went nine O's uh, with an eight two deck height block uh, and a uh, and a, and a two speed transmission. I'll leave that uh, right. behind it. And my brother, I remember the first time he came out, and he was one of the main reasons I got in racing. He was so excited because we had leave the line of around eighty eight hundred. I'd shifted about ninety six, so it just ran like between eighty six and ninety six down the track, and it was uh, it was pretty cool to hear. So what throttle bodies are these? These were uh, SVO throttle bodies that they made uh, at the time. And if I memory serves me right, I think these were eight, they were 86 millimeter throttle bodies. And uh, you know, Hank Can you Durshin, tilt the manifold up a little bit? Yep, and Hank Dershin, uh, who was an SVO engineer at the time, uh, was the one that was pushing a lot of this hardware. But now you just ran a single mass air, right? Yeah, what it was was a single mass airflow sensor. So the two ducts on one bank, we had the mass airflow sensor hooked up. On the other bank, just for equal pressure drop, if you will, we had a just a dummy unit. So the computer was connected just to this one mass uh, airflow sensor. And in the computer, we adjusted the transfer function, or in other words, uh, the voltage signal from the mass airflow meter to how many pounds of air it was taking in. So basically, we took whatever the stock one was and we made it a factor of two because we had two throttle bodies that were uh, taking the air in. Okay, so at this time, what computer were you running? At this time, uh, we were running um, a GSR, uh, General Systems Research, that a guy named Sam Guido uh, developed. And really, uh, that computer was his um, college uh, project. That was one of the things he did was make an engine control unit. We actually ran that in his car uh, for a period of time. Um, and Sam also, people may remember the Ford Extender, that was, put oh, yeah. the, uh, that was used the five liter Mustangs to extend the power band. So Sam came to the track with us a lot. And what he heard people say was, I don't want a whole computer. I just want to get around the rev limiter. And that's what Sam developed when he developed the extender. Uh, we currently you know, have updated the car uh, for the electronics because while that was a really cool computer Sam designed, uh, it was pretty hard to calibrate. So we do run a big stuff three now uh, in, in the car. But that's a completely custom fabbed uh, obviously intake manifold with the runner lengths design the yep. way that you wanted them for the power curve and the yes and the cam higher, and everything yep for very high rpm was there anything special done to the heads the heads no the heads were pretty much you know uh off the shelf um the ones that svo provided that were poured you know cnc ported by uh, roush yates at the time can you flip that over so that's a ford casting oh yeah right <laughs> yes sir now, is this something similar to what they ran in NASCAR at the time? Yes, very similar. So what was the what was the horsepower, if you remember, of this engine? Do you remember the RPM or the compression or anything? You know, back in this day was before I was really doing much dyno work. Um, in fact, no dyno work. I mean, we were on a pretty tight budget just trying to get things out and running. Um, I'm thinking the motor made probably, you know, you know, seven to eight hundred horsepower to go. You know, we were about twenty eight hundred pounds, and we ran, you know, nine O's at like a hundred and high hundred and fifty mile an hour type range, um, and that was without nitrous. The car did run a best with nitrous of like I think it was eight thirty five at one hundred and sixty eight miles an hour. When's the last time you ran the car? This car, uh, the last time we ran it with this motor in it would have been in their mid nineties. We did for a short period of time put a uh, super stock uh, motor in it and actually had it running as a GT car. We did that just for about one year, uh, just kind of for fun to try something else. Uh, but the goal is, as we get uh, a few other things done within the shop on my to-do list is to uh, get this back together with the A200 deck and ran the way we put it together exactly the way we ran it. 
in its flask configuration, which is what you see here. So you're going to put it together with the Watson intake and the Yates heads and make it look like it's basically its last Pro 5.0 iteration. So yes, exactly. Can we take a peek under the hood? Absolutely. Now, bear with me with the hood. Uh, I don't have the hinges on it, so I'm just going to have to lift it off and set it aside. Yeah, we just want to take a peek. This car is really super clean. It's finished really nicely. Um, same factory color as when you ran it back yeah. in 86. Is it the same color? Well, you know, 86 was a little bit more orange. This was 93 Pro Bread. And uh, my friend John D'Amico uh, painted the car. Uh, as a matter of fact, we painted, he had a house that, as luck would have it, had the um, garage half under the house. So his wife wasn't real happy with us when we ended up huh. uh, painting the car because this was on a rotisserie, painted the bottom of the car and everything. Of course, that was many, many years ago, so it's a little rough now, but uh, it looks good. Let's check out the interior. Okay, yeah, I got so, it. Original, you bought this car new, right? Correct. So, it was a stick shift five speed GT when you bought it? Yes. Did you ever run it bone stock? Uh, yes, I think we went uh, like mid 15s with it. Everybody loves that steering wheel. Yeah, as a matter of fact, that was one of the things I purposely didn't want cruise control because I like that steering wheel. Wow. Got your number on there. I see you got some NHRA stickers from the different events. Weight bar, you can see the weight bar in there. Everybody knows that sound. <laughs> got your Optima batteries. I, honestly, Ryan, the car looks like uh, you could sink a motor into this thing and go racing. Uh, yeah, we, we could. Absolutely. And of course, you got a couple other race cars, but this is probably near and dear to your heart. I know a lot of the Mustang fans are going to love this, seeing this thing, and especially hearing the fact that it's going to be back on the track. Yeah, looking forward to, uh, to getting it back. All right, man. Thanks for a great look at, uh, at your collection of stuff. And uh, this stuff isn't just nostalgia. It's going back on the track. So thanks for checking out our video. This is Brian Wolf, and we got more stuff coming up with Brian, so stay tuned.